po, marami pong nakabinbin sa aming mga kaso. Hindi namin alam saan ipafile. Conviction. This is one aspect of our work where we are rated. Our performance is rated. Also by international, uh, the international community. And which is unfair to us. Philippine has been tainted with confirmed cases of extortion activities perpetrated by the immigration officers in the guise of guideline implementation. Option po ay hindi titigil sa ating bansa. Not even during our lifetime. Unless we change ourselves, unless we change our values. Isang kapagpalang araw po sa atin lahat, mga kababayan. Kini-question nga sa pagdinig dito sa budget ng uh, Office of the Ombudsman kung bakit o mano bumaba ang uh, kanilang percentage sa mga nahatulang guilty sa mga kasong pinafile na uh, dito sa Office of the Ombudsman. So, Office of the Ombudsman, ibig sabihin, yung mga opisyal na ating gobyerno na nakitaan ng anumang anomalya. Posibleng mali ng paggastos ng budget, posibleng naglabag sa kanilang trabaho. So, ibig sabihin, mas marami yung mga na-dismiss na kaso, mga kababayan po natin. At aminado nga itong si uh, Ombudsman Samuel Martires na umano'y talagang talamak ang corruption sa ating bansa. Na kung sino lang ang may kapangyarihan, ay sila rin yung maraming pera. So, ibig sabihin, nahihirapan din ang Office of the Ombudsman na mapatunayan kung uh, talagang guilty yung mga inaakusahan o yung mga nireklamong opisyal ng ating gobyerno. Uh, buti pa nga umano sa Korte Suprema ay ilang dokumento lamang ang hinahanap at abogado na ang nagpipresenta. Dito umano sa Office of the Ombudsman, sila pa yung naghahanap at kailangan pa nila halongkatin ang iba't ibang dokumento para mapatunayan ang isang nireklamo na guilty nga. For the conviction rate, Mr. Chair, 2020, it is 61.2%. 2021, it is 42.7%. And 2022, it is 26.5%. With all due respect to our dear Ombudsman, although this represents the period where he is not yet appointed as such, can we explain that this de decreasing rate of conviction of the Office of the Ombudsman? Right now, Your Honors, mayroon kaming problema that Congress itself created for us. And this is the amended jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. Doon po sa batas na yon, sa bagong jurisdiction ng Sandigan Bayan, there are cases na hindi na ipafile sa Sandigan Bayan but will be filed by the lower courts. Ang nakasama pa roon sa batas na yon, sinasabi it should be filed in the judicial adjacent judicial region where the accused, uh, where the public officer is a resident. So if you are a resident of Naga City, that is Region 5, the case must either be filed before Region 4 or before Region 8. These are the adjacent regions, Region 5. Ang problema namin ngayon, pag final mo yung kaso sa executive judge ng Region 8, it is dismissed an executive judge because there are no guidelines issued by the Supreme Court. Wala hong guidelines. So sa ngayon po, marami pong nakabinbin sa aming mga kaso. Hindi namin alam saan ipafile. Kami po ay at, at the loss. And that is why one of these days we'll be re uh, recommending to Congress to amend this law. Ibalik na lang natin sa dating jurisdiction na sandigan bayan ng filing ng cases. Instead of pretending to say that if the public officer is from Region 5, the case be filed in the adjacent region. Pareho din man ho ang resulta noon na file mo sa Region 5. Number two, on the rate of conviction, this is one aspect of our work where we are rated. Our performance is rated also by international, uh, the international community, and which is unfair to us. Na ang aming performance is based on the conviction rate. Hindi po kami ang husgado. Iba po ang pananaw namin, insofar as we are concerned, there is probable cause for the filing of the information. Pero ang husgado po, ibang pananaw. Remember that no two, just as no two individuals are the same, even twins, wala hong abogado na pare-pareho ang pag-iisip. May mga abogado na taliwas ang pag-iisip sa katotohanan, may mga abogado na tamang pag-iisip. So kung nagkataon na yung, yung huwes o tatlong justices ng Sandigan Bayan, ang isa ay taliwas ang pag-iisip at sinasabing acquittal, abay, maka-acquit nga. 
So our performance should not be based really on the conviction rate. That is unfair to the office of the Ombudsman. It's just like also rating the Department of Justice on the number of cases where they secure conviction. Because after this and dig and buy and after the, the, the regional trial courts, the accused has the right to appeal to the Court of Appeals and to the Supreme Court. E paano pagdating din na Supreme Court na acquit yung akusado? This is our problem actually uh, in the Transparency International. Uh, I confronted them about this also for rating us on the basis of conviction. Marami pong salamat, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, the manifestation of the Ombudsman is well understood. Uh, we just hope that at least with respect to the number of cases being filed by the Ombudsman with the Santigan and the regular courts, there is an increasing rate. And it is acknowledged that the quantum of evidence being required by the Office of the Ombudsman vis-a-vis -vis the Santigan Bayan and the regular courts are different. And with respect to the major programs, Mr. Chair, can you please draw the line between and among investigation, enforcement, prevention, and public assistance? I hope we can be enlightened by way of illustration and examples how we delineate these four major programs of the Office of the Ombudsman. Honor of uh, the function of the Ombudsman to provide public assistance. This is actually the intention of the framers of the 1987 Constitution. Now we entertain even petty complaints from the poor, the marginalized workers. So ngayon po, pinalalakas po namin ang aming public assistance unit where we will be hiring on those who are in the other offices will be assigned to the public assistance unit to take care of uh, the complaints from the public. On the matter of the enforcement of the decisions, we monitor that. Yung mga decision po namin yung mga aming mga orders for preventive suspension, na-discover po namin na may mga agency ho na hindi po sinusunod yung aming order. We discovered this in one of the uh, agencies na yung isang tao na preventively suspended ay hindi pala ini-implement ng kanilang personal officer. So patuloy pong he was functioning as regional director until an item in one of the newspapers came out na itong regional director was still acting as regional director sa isang probinsya. On the matter of investigation, this is where mayroon akong uh, tawag doon, mayroon akong scheduled um, appointment with uh, the Supreme Court for us to discuss na intindihin nila yung pag-iimbestiga ng ombudsman Madali yung maghusga because this is related to inordinate delay. Madali yung maghusga na sasabihin, bakit ang tagal nyo mag-imbestiga? Ba't iniaabot kayo ng dalawa, tatlong taon o limang taon? Sa Department of Justice po, kahit anong kaso sa Department of Justice, yung kaso niyan it pertains to drugs, murder or homicide, ilan lang pong dokumento ang kailangan mo sa murder case? You only need about three or four documents. The rest is testimonial. In a drug case, ilan lang dokumento ang kailangan mo? Kung may buy operation, yung findings mo ng chemist, yun lang po mga kailangan. Eh. But in the investigation of a violation of the Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act, naghahagila po kami ng dokumento sa mga various government agencies like the Commission on Audit. Ang nangyayari po, na, nababalang pong investigasyon namin na sila agad silang hingi ng extension of time na bigyan kami ng kopya nitong mga dokumento. Kahit na po yung mga kaso na nanggagaling sa Blue Ribbon Committees of both houses, i-verify po namin ito. At humingi sila, as usual, humingi ulit yung mga ahensya ng extension of time to provide us these documents. Kung minsan may mga kaso na hindi pa tapos ang COA ng kanilang investigation, ng kanilang audit. So hinihintay po namin yung matapos ng COA yung audit at ang buong proseso. Not just yung audit ng auditor, pero yung proseso na umabot na hanggang sa end bank, sa commission, na yung audit po ay na na ng commission. Okay lang po kung walang nakita. Pero mayroon po ako sanang gustong i-mungkahi sa kongreso na kung pwede po ay alisin na sa special provisions o sa general provisions ng GAA yung pagpapublish ng, uh, ng audit observation memorandum. Ito pong audit observation memorandum ay nagkukos po ng gulo kasi sa pananaw po ng isang tao, pag nabasa niya 
na mayroong yung audit observation memorandum sa isang 10 million project ay mayroong counting abiria ay sasabihin na kagad ng tao na itong itong government official ay kumikita doon sa 10 milyon na proyekto. E ang hindi lang pala na-submit ay resibo. So, it, I leave this to Congress na alisin natin ito kasi pag nag-file po ng kaso sa ombudsman, dinismiss namin ang kaso kasi wala naman. Anong sasabihin? Nalagyan na naman ng ombudsman. Eh, pag ganyan mo po sana, sana totoo po na may naglalagay sa ombudsman. Uh, sana, sana po totoo. But the problem is creating an inwendo that the ombudsman earned. At pag final ng ombudsman sa husgado, dinismiss din ang husgado dahil wala talagang ebidensya. Tapos na yung audit, wala namang problema. Eh, kawawa naman din pati yung mga huwes na pagbibintangan na, na nalagyan. Isa, Magsino, a fellow Batanggenya. Yes. Magandang umaga po to our Ombudsman family, Ombudsman Martires, and to our colleagues, to all our guests. Uh, this representation of the OFW party list would like to state our specific concern. Recently po, a major concern of our OFWs is the recurring offloading of OFWs at the point of departure caused by our immigration officers on suspicion of involvement in illegal recruitment and human trafficking. Unfortunately, the campaign has been tainted with confirmed cases of extortion activities perpetrated by the immigration officers in the guise of guideline implementation. In fact, in 2022, the Bureau of Immigration itself reported that out of the 32,000 cases of offloading, only 472 were found to be victims of human trafficking or illegal recruitment. Then there is also the problem of delayed release tampered packages and stolen items from our balikbayan boxes sent by our OFWs to their relatives in the country, especially during the Yuletide season, December na naman po, with the suspicion that some customs personnel may be anomalously uh, loosely involved. To address these issues, I have repeatedly called the attention of the official dom of both agencies on this with the recommendation to conduct investigations to uncover the truth possibly identify guilty parties and to pursue the cleansing and professionalization of their ranks. May I ask, Mr. Chair, in relation po to these concerns, from 2021 to the present, are there pending investigations conducted or cases filed by the Ombudsman against immigration and customs officers relative to alleged extortion activities and explained income in their sal ends or subjected to lifestyle checks, Mr. Chair? Thank you very much for the question. Napakahirap yata ang sagutin ng inyong tanong. Pero pipilitin ko pong sagutin. Unahin ko po sa SALEN. We all have that misconception na pag nagkamali ka ng declaration mo sa SALEN, ay agad kang papatawan ng parusa. That is not true. The provisions itself of 6713 tells us that the filer has the chance to rectify whatever error there is. If you if you fail to declare in your salen a particular property, you're not given the chance to correct your salen. On the matter of uh, filing of cases, malala po ninyo na last year yata, last year or this year, yung Pastillas case, where about more than 40 immigration officials and personnel were dismissed from the service. Sa ngayon po, hindi ko po masasabi Anong aspeto ng gawain sa immigration ang aming iniimbestigahan? Because these are all confidential in nature. I assure you na yung mga nababasa namin sa dyaryo ay lihim namin iniimbestiga po. And these are still undocumented cases. We are gathering documents and testimonies from persons on these matters or these concerns about human trafficking, yung nawawala yung mga packages, yung mga bagahe, ay tinitingnan po namin ito. Pero hindi ko po masasabi sa ngayon. Alin po sa mga yon? ang Kasi these are, these are still fact-finding investigation. Uh, these are supposed to be confidential in nature po, Your Honor. Maraming po salamat.
Uh, thank you po for that answer, Ombudsman Martinez. Uh, Mr. Chair, so I believe that the Ombudsman is doing the best that they can to the best of their ability to be able to weed out the corrupt uh, officials in the immigration and customs. Then I will be looking for that po and looking forward for that. Is there, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if there are, is there a trend on the incidence of this rate of these cases? Ito po ba sa tingin niyo po ay nag increase po o nag decrease po, Mr. Chair? On the incidence of these cases, I I must admit na ang source ko po ng information does not only come from the media, but also from airport personnel specialist, airport security. This is that this is one instance na ginagamit ko po yung aming confidential fund mm -hmm. by hiring some investigators to look into these matters. I I usually coordinate with the government investigation agencies to help us uh, alamin ko ano talaga ang katotohanan, ano nangyari. Kung, kung nagtaas po ang incidence na mga gawain ito, ang korupsyon po ay hindi titigil sa ating bansa. Not even during our lifetime. Unless we change ourselves, unless we change our values. Ang korupsyon po sa ngayon ay hindi mapaglalabanan ng batas lamang. All our laws on corruption are post-factum, after the fact. Kailangan po natin ng isang haligi na magbabago po ng ating ugali. We have to introduce, as I've always been saying, a subject from kindergarten until college on God-centered values formation. Kung magtuturo lang po tayo ng good manners and right conduct, na hindi po nakasentro sa Panginoon, wala akong kwenta yun. Whether you're religious, whether, whatever is your religion, whether you're a Protestant, a Catholic, a Muslim, or what, kung lahat po tayo naniniwala sa Diyos, lahat tayo takot sa Diyos. Pero sa ngayon po nangyayari ngayon, wala na tayong respeto sa Diyos, wala tayong respeto sa sarili natin. So not during our life, lifetime we'll be able to solve corruption. Ang corruption po ngayon sa Pilipinas ay nagiging endemic. Ang korupsyon po ngayon sa Pilipinas ay nagiging parang fashion. Becomes a fad. Because money becomes power. And if you have power, eh talagang kailangan ano yun, sikat ka. So, if you're asking whether naging crisis ito sa Bureau of Immigration, not only the Bureau of Immigration, tumataas po ang incidence ng korupsyon sa bawat ahinsa ng gobyerno at magugulat po kayo. Na this incidence is not only in the Bureau of Customs and the Bureau of Immigration, or in other departments. Mayroon mga departamento ng gobyerno na hindi nyo akalain ay kurap. Akala nyo natutulog. Pero mas kurap pala yon sa ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na akala nyo ay kurap. So sa mga nangyayari po ngayon, nababasa natin sa dyaryo, it only shows that what we need actually right now to fight corruption, to stop this incidence of corruption, is to introduce a subject through a law, a good manners and right conduct subject that is God-centered. You just teach good manners and right conduct, forgetting about religion, then wala hong kwenta yon. Others would philosophize na there is separation between, between church and state. Yes, there is. But religion this has nothing to do, or the separation of church and state has nothing to do in values formation. You want to have a good person, let that separation of church and state argument be set aside. Makikita naman po natin yon sa ating mga katoliko, nagsisimba tayo mga naka-short pants. Mga nakasando yung iba. Hindi po pati insulto ko yan, pero totoo po yan. Because we have lost our respect for God. We have lost our respect for ourselves. We do not fear hell anymore. Wala hong impyerno sa iba sa atin. So gumagawa po tayo ng krimen sa ngayon po sa ating kagustuhan. So if we're talking about corruption, if we're talking about incidents of corruption, if it is increasing, it is increasing, Your Honours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Madam Ch uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to say that I'm so happy to note that Ombudsman, our Ombudsman Martirez, is a very God-centered person, and I'm very sure that you will be on the right path with the Ombudsman family. Uh, needless to say, we are with the Office of the Ombudsman in the campaign to fight corruption in our government. And I would like to say my manifestation of support for the approval of the proposed budget of the Office of the Ombudsman because corruption in the government is a chronic cancer that afflicts every single fiber of our society and no effective 
cure seems to be in sight, except vigilance on the part of our people and consensus public service. In this fight, the office of the Ombudsman is in the front line to overcome. We need the strengthened office of the Ombudsman. It is for these reasons that I fully support the approval of the proposed budget of the office of the Ombudsman for 2024. Maraming salamat po.